and welcome back to Last Week in India AI with me, Sindhuja, and my colleague, Jibu. It's been a very busy week for the team here at Official India AI. We are right in the middle of the Experience AI Virtual Summit and uh, walking away with some fantastic learnings. Jibu, how are things with you and uh, how's it going? Hi, Sindhuja. Uh, good to hear from you again. I mean, on the podcast, we are in touch on a regular basis as we work together on Experience AI coverage. Uh, it has been fascinating. Today I was uh, thinking, right, we were organizing our next webinar, which Sindhuja will be hosting. Uh, for change, I think people are bored with me. <laughs> so we were, I, I was thinking, you know, we were working on hosting the next webinar, uh, next few, three, four webinars in advance. And I was going all crazy. Then I, for a second, I stopped and I was thinking, how the hell the NASCOM events team is pulling off this experience AI, right? Mm-hmm. It's virtual event. You know, four days across, happening for across four days, you have at least three, two, three dozen speakers from yeah. different part of the globe, and yeah. they are in multiple time zones, right? <laughs> yeah. And how do you bring it all together? Because well, like, if I, I think there was a slight technical difficulty yesterday before one of the panel, and somebody was texting uh, me that, okay, is it not working? Is it working for me? Then I was like, mm. these things are very minor if you look at the large scheme of things, right? Yeah, and I was like, it, it it went almost as good an F F1 pick crew, you know, which we both are big fans of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, it's record yeah. in its own way, you know. I think yes, F1 uh, pick crew is the is yeah. the gold standard when it comes to efficiency. So so yeah, I mean, it has been incredible. We had amazing speakers so far in the last two days, right? From Vijay Raho and the principal scientific uh, advisor uh, to the government of India. We got uh, KTR, uh, the minister from Telangana, uh, the industry leaders. I mean, I can't, from Rohini Srivastava, uh, Rekha Menon. I mean, I, I, I think I will miss many of the names if I start listing out the industry leaders. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, it's been a, it's been a information palooza. I think. It's, and it's more, just, uh, more interesting ones are another. coming, right? You got Andrew Ng, you got Nigel Wilson. All this coming uh, in the next uh, days. Yeah. Absolutely. Yesterday, uh, I think uh, I was listening to Howard Yu as well for a while, and he had some very interesting insights about, uh, you know, really trying to bring AI uh, and, and bring the entire ecosystem together and how this this can really sort of change the way industries are going to be in the in the days forward. So there's, there's a lot happening. I mean, I think just looking at this agenda for four days, is it's very evident that, you know, we've tried to touch um, as many aspects of the AI ecosystem as possible. So all those who are listening out there, uh, you know, please do head over to our website, uh, www.indiaai.in to uh, get the best of the highlights of the Experience AI Virtual Summit. And, uh, you know, we should be able to give you all the more updates and more in the days to come. But uh, yeah, coming coming to really what we're trying to uh, extrapolate as, 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 you know, takeaways from uh, events like this, I think there's one thing which, you know, which I think Jibu and you'll agree is that when it comes to a lot of these typically corporate events, I think the, the biggest platform is to really try and understand how the enterprises are um, leveraging AI, how startups are really trying to utilize AI solutions to uh, solve some really big problems. But I think one area that generally gets, um, or rather is harder to crack, I, I'd assume, I think it's just because of the accessibility of it. One of the areas which I think, and I think deserves a lot of uh, emphasis is what the state governments in a country like India are doing. Now, India, of course, as you know, has a very lofty AI plan. It's, uh, uh, you know, we, we've got a lot of work happening from from the, and, and a lot of impetus coming in from the government as well to sort of make AI um front and center in terms of the strategy for further digitization. So it, it really, at this point, it makes me wonder, how are you going to get uh, you know, a, a concentrated effort across all of the states of India, like who's doing uh, work in this area? What are the policies that are being crafted? How are the leaders really understanding and comprehending the opportunities that lie ahead of them? Are they technologically aware? So these are the things that I think, you know, sort of um, crop up in the minds of different people. And I think uh, a state focused approach is something that I think our listeners will really get to, uh, you know, weigh in on today. And that's something uh, that you know, completely- CCI has been bringing in. Yeah. I completely agree with you on this. So if you read uh, Constitution 101, it says India is unitary in nature, federal in structure. Yeah. So so coming to that point, yes, uh, states are going to be key drivers in AI deployment. I mean, if you look at that, I mean, you have the, the list, right? The state list, the union list, and the concurrent list. Yeah. Uh, many of the areas where you will be able to use AI for a impactful uh, applications, right, will be in healthcare, 
uh, agriculture um, and uh, education uh, most of the things are either in state list or in concurrent list i mean the the central list contains uh, bigger things right like the defense and the uh, research and all those things but yeah. I, yeah, i think those things like water management all this uh, things that affect the citizen you know on yeah. a day to day basis so that's why states are going to be very crucial uh, in going forward similarly i think few months back uh, niti ayog uh, had a state consultation and they brought together uh, many of the it secretaries and the leaders from each state on a bureaucratic level who have been driving ai and ai related project and i think that's a good start and there have been uh, many efforts going on but like we said right it's an early early days yeah. uh, many of the states are very many incredible projects uh, many of the states have a uh, pilot some of them has uh, gone beyond pilots and implemented it for, uh, uh, for in many ways and uh, i think one of the states has have been doing an incredible job i i can say the state is pretty much the ai champion of india is telangana yeah. i mean they the commitment they have shown for emerging technology not just ai emerging technology in all is impressive and uh, they have announced 2020 as the year of ai and uh, i think uh, uh, the ktr the minister uh, uh, minister from telangana who, who was one of the main uh, pe- brains behind this uh, this push towards you know main drivers behind this push towards emerging technology was on uh, experience ai and i think yeah. you were there covering that uh, panel if i believe that's right yeah so i was uh, fortunate enough to have got the session uh, the fireside chat with uh, kt ramrao and uh, moderated by uh, the wns chairman K- Murugesh so this was a very illuminating you know uh, 20 minutes 20 25 minutes where they spoke intently about how telangana has really sort of uh, put together a strategy and how they're actually working towards a strategy so there are a few things i'd like to really um, emphasize upon uh, you know in terms of the takeaways from this particular speech and uh, what was really striking is just how involved and how committed um, a minister like uh, kt ramana really is he is of course for the for the ones who are not aware he is the um he is currently the minister of uh, municipal administration and urban development industries as well as it and commerce for the government of telangana uh he's um been from for, for a very long time you know as someone who's also been covering tech for the last 3 4 years uh it's his his name is one that comes up constantly as one who's really genuinely passionate about making a difference at the ground level using technology and you know he also sort of spoke about how first and foremost it was like a disclaimer way you know because i think you know it, he was aware that this is a nascom event and most of the people who are going to be attending this are all from the tech space in india so the first thing he said was hey you know what i'm not a tech guy you know and that's true you know and what was really interesting i think you know was uh, how he uh, made a bit of a disclaimer right in the beginning and uh, th- th- i'll tell you why it's important i'll come to that in just a bit and where he said you know hey i'm not a tech guy and i think that was uh, that was i think interesting in a way because most of the people at his level most of the most of the leaders that we have today most of the people in the bureaucracy in the government really do not have that kind of a technical prowess or technical background however what's important is not having those credentials but more importantly to understand why technology is really important and i think that is the whole takeaway and the point of uh, you know states really sort of leading the front and um, uh, leading out in the front and really taking the initiative when it comes to spearheading spearheading technology driven you know uh, programs like this so uh, one of the first things that he said was you know we cannot solve this problem alone yeah we have gone ahead and declared 2020 as a year of ai we've come up with some fantastic initiatives we have all the right intentions to do this but we should not kid ourselves when we say you know we have all the technical expertise to ex, you know to execute all of this so, and so where they are bridging and how they bridging that gap is by forging very strategic very smart partnerships making friends with the right people as uh, ktr garu said you know in his uh, in his um, speech and i think uh, what is really critical is to be able to piggyback on that expertise of people from within the industry be it organizations like nascom uh, organizations like intel uh, like nvidia these are the kind of companies and of course a lot of other incubators accelerators a lot of academia like iit hyderabad these are the different uh, stakeholders these are the different ecosystem players that governments are actively engaging with especially the government of telangana is actively engaging with to try and make a difference and try to get that level of expertise which they are probably individually not capable of what they are definitely capable of doing or what they can provide is definitely access to data and this is another thing which i found to be very very illuminating so uh, the, the government of telangana has something called an open data policy where data is now available you know in a machine readable format which belongs to the state and this is something that will really 
be uh, a, a game changer when it comes to um, people who really want to utilize uh, AI technologies. And as we all know, I think the, the power of AI really, really stems from the power and the expense and the expansive data available. So when governments come forward and allow, um, you know, startups and enterprises and corporates and all other players in the and even even research, uh, you know, players in the particular space to really utilize and use this data for the right reasons, I think that is when you can make um, a difference at the ground level in a in a very very protracted way. And of course, there are some focus areas. I think it's good that the government is not the government of Telangana is not going all out and applying their logic of AI to pretty much every and any field. You know, they have zeroed in on a couple of sectors like healthcare, like education. Uh, like uh, agriculture and of course smart and urban governments these are some core areas where the government of telangana is really sort of doing a lot of work and trying to um, you know bring a lot more innovation and really bring this ai ecosystem together a recent uh, development in this front would be this initiative called uh, ai for ai uh, which is uh, which stands for artificial intelligence for agriculture innovation and this is being done with the world economic forum uh, center for industrial uh, center for industrial revolution uh, which is the india you know um, uh, wing basically and the the work that's being done here is essentially to try and build a community, get those conversations started and really start uh, giving more impetus to innovation in the space of AI. So um, among other things, I think, you know, uh, they're also at the same time, uh, you know, uh, Keshe Murgesh also asked him a very loaded question about this whole concept of responsible and ethical AI. And uh, truth be told, I think, you know, um, we at India AI also have been covering a lot of stories on responsible and ethical AI most of August. I mean, our entire month of coverage is actually dedicated to that. Uh, we also conducted a couple of webinars on this, uh, you know, on this topic. And I think it's one thing we can all safely say that this is a space that's slowly developing. It's it's developing as we speak. So nobody has the right answers just yet. I think it's just a work in progress, so to speak. You could you could very much call it a WIP. So um, what was uh, really impressive was that uh, the, the government is also very very aware of the fact that yes, you know, ethical AI is very important, and they are working towards building responsible systems and responsible use of uh, AI driven technologies and. The very fact that they are aware of these, uh, you know, uh, constraints and they are aware of these challenges that exist within the domain and are working towards uh, trying to get the right kind of expertise to address the right kind of questions is also a very clear indicator that they are headed the right way, which is why I think uh, it's, it's all of these uh, developments that make me believe that the government of Telangana is really sort of, uh, a, a, you know, spearheading the the right movement in the way AI is supposed to be moving in a, in a country like India. And I think it's something a lot of other states can take a cue from, Jibo. I think it's a it's a it's really sort of like a, a path breaker in a way. I completely agree with you, Sinduja. I mean, states are uh, doing some of the states are doing incredible job and Telangana is doing an absolutely brilliant job. But I, I was also attending one of the interesting panels where uh, the IT secretaries from three of the states, including Telangana, Maharashtra, and Tamil Nadu, mm -hmm. were speaking about how we can scale up the pilot programs, right? We have so many pilot projects out there. Yeah. And the question of how do we scale it up, you know, that's one of the big challenges. And I remember one one uh, interesting thing, uh, Sri, uh, uh, Mr. Hans Raj Verma, the IT secretary, principal IT secretary of uh, Tamil Nadu was mentioning mm -hmm. that AI is not a magic bullet. Mm -hmm. You know, you shouldn't be having this technology and looking for uh, using it. It's, it. It should be other way, right? Should yeah. be you find out a problem and identify the right technology to apply it. I mean, and that's where, uh, you, I mean, for that, uh, I, you know, having a technical proficiency is not the must, but having a bigger vision, you know, the ability to see the larger picture, mm. I, that's where, uh, you know, that's that's the most important skills that you need. And uh, coming to Telangana once again, right, I, I mean, uh, uh, another person who has been uh, doing an exceptional job is uh, Mr. Jayesh Ranjan. He's the yeah. principal secretary for IT and industry in Telangana. Mm. And uh, the, his, uh, the whole team of emerging technology, uh, you know, including people people like Ramadevi Linga, they have been doing an incredible job when it comes to AI and other technology. Yeah. So uh, yesterday, uh, you know, even, uh, uh, you know, Jayesh Ranjan was uh, speaking about uh, the various initiatives the government has been running. And... Uh, and uh, I pretty much tweeted a picture of uh, a video of my notes. I keep writing it down because so I realize this, <laughs> there is so many, right? I mean, there yep. is uh, so many happening in healthcare, agriculture, and uh, law and order. I think that's the three area they will be doing. And one of the interesting initiative, it's no longer a pilot, it's deployed across is the I, I mean, if I'm right, uh, it's a it's a scheme for uh, the pensioners. It's called RTDAI. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So it's a facial recognition system based out of computer vision. So in order to collect government pensions, you need to be, you know, prove your identification, prove that you are still alive and you know, all those things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you used to do that through biometrics. Right. You come in person and uh, provide your fingerprints uh, or retina scan, things like that. Yeah. But uh, with COVID, that has become quite challenging. So now what this system does is uh, you ask these people to take a selfie and send it over. Mm. So the AI algorithm runs through the selfie. It recognizes if the person is the, you know, mass image, mass image, despite if the despite any changes in facial feature like a okay. beard or, a, you know, whatever that is. Mostly uh, a mask right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mask, of course. Uh, and so it has, the, you know, they do this deep learning system that matches this facial recognition operation. And it started as a pilot program for uh, 30,000 pensioners. Now it has been expanded to across, you know, 30 lakh people, right? I mean, this yeah. is, of course, pensioners are our senior citizens and uh, the risk for them to getting COVID and affecting it uh, was, uh, you know, affecting it adversely is much, much higher than someone like us, right? Uh, so it it is, it is one way of for keeping them safe as well as making sure their uh, you know their needs are met and uh, this is something same thing uh, uh, mr hansraj verma was also mentioning how do you use yeah. ai for uh, better governance that's the question that's a question all of three uh, three secretaries were uh, uh, pondering upon right yeah, i mean in, in case of tamil nadu uh, there they have this gel jeevan mission where they use ai and iot to uh, dictate the quality of water, right? Based on uh, like they use 57 parameters, uh, you know, and make sure. I mean, if you have ever lived in Chennai, you know how important water is. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I have lived in Chennai, and I do agree with you. It's, yes, so it's so I think that's that's another thing we have common, in, uh, you know. So so because of that, uh, so that's where you know in Chennai the and in Tamil Nadu itself, it's it's, uh, it's the second biggest uh, you know GDP contributor in India um, yeah. and a lot of agriculture land. But there is a severe shortage of water, you know. I mean, uh, right. so what they are also now using is they are mapping these uh, water bodies. You know, I I mean, you know, whatever water uh, resources, it has to be managed much efficiently. Yeah. So yeah. they are using satellite data and things like that to, uh, you know, map these water bodies and uh, you know assess uh, and uh, things like that. And yeah. another important uh, technology that's playing a crucial role especially in terms of governance and chatbot right i mean we have seen a chatbot deployed by maharashtra government to provide uh, government services mm-hmm. now you have uh, telangana has imp- implemented chatbot in uh, you know uh, road transportation in uh, registration services right you, you know yes. that's I mean, that's a difficult situation, right? You go to a registration office, uh, whether it's registration, register land or uh, something else, and you go there and the, some bureaucrat tells, hey, this document is missing, that document is missing, right? There's no yeah. signature there. You know, there is no affidavit. Uh, you need three you know, photos, whatever that is. And that's like the most, most uh, one of the most hated processes you yeah. have to go through in your life, right? Absolutely. So uh, I don't know if you know this, but the government of Telangana is actually one of the first, and I think it's the first in the country, you know, to have its own blockchain system for uh, maintaining land records. So yes, imagine uh, the possibilities coming out of that, and that, that would make any um, a company that wants to, to retrieve this data and work, work across it and actually apply AI to it, it'll make that process so much more easier. So I, yeah, yeah, these I, are the big problems which are. Yes, and I think I think one way these uh, these leaders are viewing AI is as it is helping reduce the friction, right, in the in the governance, right. Hopefully, that is the hope. You know, that it's essentially sort of go to going towards, yeah. And uh, now, I mean, law and order is also becoming a priority. Uh, but uh, when they were addressing, one of the questions is, how can you scale it up, right? I mean, uh, some of these projects are uh, deployed in, in uh, let's say, uh, in, a, in a small scale, right? I mean, we have seen so many projects across the country deployed in small scale, but the question of scaling it up is always there, right? I mean, that's something also people ask us regularly, right? You have I this agree. interesting I, project. I can, I can try giving an answer to this, and uh, I think this is purely based on what I've heard from the spectrum of leaders that I speak to thanks to this job. I think uh, largely when it comes to scale, it, it it has to be a collaborative effort because not one person has all the solutions. And I think uh, uh, KTR was right, you know, when he said that, you know, this is a collab, this is going to have to be a collaborative effort. Now, let's assume that you have a startup that is able to bring to you um, a solution which is very effective in a smaller pocket with a, with a smaller data set of people. But to be able to scale, they require high 
uh, you know, computing speeds. So this is where companies like an Intel and NVIDIA come into the come into the fray, where they can actually sort of support these endeavors and provide the right kind of you know processing speeds and the most adequate and fastest levels of processing speeds to companies like this, to startups like this, to actually accelerate their uh, solutions and make them more effective and uh, ensure that the AI is happening at every level, even even you know even when it comes to data and cloud, even at that point. Uh, another another way to really do this is to um, is to have more awareness and i think if if a particular solution is uh, being tested and if it's if a particular solution has shown success in a small pocket in a particular state then it requires a lot more coordination across those different constituencies and then further across the districts and then further across the different pockets of the state to be able to implement it at a state level then we can talk about a national and a you know a large scale implementation so like i said you know it's not like one person has the key to this it's like multiple keys are necessary you know to unlock the true potential of any one particular solution and that would probably be the initial steps in terms of you know addressing this challenge of scale and i think that is something that is the next barrier that we can expect in um, really making ai that much more democratized more accessible and more easy to use for everybody i think i agree with you you know i mean uh, to summarize uh, things i mean like we can we can point out to three major challenges when it comes to uh, a scaling up or large scale deployment of ai right i'm resonating some of the words uh, said by jay ranjan one of course being the data right i mean we need to make sure the, the data sitting in multiple government uh, organizations you know the, all the silos are brought out you know made they they should be made machine readable and you know get get the best out of data right i yeah. mean Uh, even uh, rev shankar prasad the minister was telling like that we are data rich data is a national asset how do we exploit it right uh, in, a, in 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 the best way possible so uh, you know there have been so many initiatives happening you know data exchanges as well as well as telangana open ai program the national government's open data program you know those things are happening second as you said we need to develop a high performing uh, you know shared computer infrastructure right yes. and uh, yeah. that's something uh, has been now uh, part of the discourse recently you know with niti ayog's uh, ira over the uh, you know paper uh, published uh, the, the policy paper published there has been some work done by incredible work done by cdac in pune which is a part of uh, ministry of it and electronics and uh, that's a bigger question right if we are i mean as much as i mean one thing we need to focus how can we be self reliant on ai technologies right uh, we yeah. still has to depend a lot on azure and aws and all this yeah. platform so one yeah. way is to develop our own high performing uh, shared infrastructure and uh, making it uh, available across the country you know across mm-hmm. the states that's one way you can do that and finally like you said uh, you need to have a whole vision which incorporates the ethical questions as well as uh, address ethical questions as well as uh create a governance framework on how you can deploy ai tools in a responsible manner right i yeah. mean that's the third thing right i mean yeah. uh, we know that uh, the uh, i mean i i am these days i'm boring people to death by talking about responsible ai because it's it's more theoretical and uh, philosophical com- you know because a few weeks back i had a conversation with uh, emmanuel goffi who heads mm. uh, the observatory for uh, uh, ethical ai in sciences for paris you the you know, one of famous of one of the famous universities in uh, europe and he being himself a former air force pilot and an international relations scholar it was mm. quite interested uh, inter- interesting uh, having a conversation on ethics and ai with him which we will publish soon in india ai so he was saying that we should make ethics more philosophical we should uh, pretty much bring ethics in ai to philosophy and and as much as i agree with it is going to make this thing much much boring and uh, difficult to bring it to the uh, you know public discourse but yeah. then again it's yeah. it's something we need to address uh, and that's the third thing right uh, how do we scale up you know how do you put the right framework in place where you make sure that these uh, tools are used for the best of humanity or best of the country you know for yeah, the absolutely. citizens absolutely No, I think it's uh, it's it's we we've reached an inflection point right now, and I think the very fact that we had so many representatives from various state governments participate at the Experience AI Summit, I think, is a is a is an indicator, is a testament to the fact that you know this is time for collaboration. And I always believe that in this era, in this new age, I think you know 
there, there was a there was a discussion I was having with a friend, and you know we were just discussing. I think we've as 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 far as humans are concerned, I think we've pretty much peaked in terms of innovation. I mean, literally last week, Neuralink was uh, pretty much everybody anything that anybody could talk about in the AI space, and how Elon Musk is really literally looking to embed a chip into your brain. I mean, it doesn't get cooler than this, right? We are living literally at the age of where we've seen practically everything. So now the challenge is going to be to understand how we can really help each other and how how we can all really really come together as an ecosystem to really derive the maximum benefits and and you know it's it's something that i think uh, requires a lot more of a mind share it's going to be a lot more challenging and i think it's going to be equally rewarding in my opinion i think it's necessary to sort of take a moment and just try and understand that you know there is still a lot of discrepancies like we're just currently talking about ai is just not meant for you know just you and me it's it's meant for mm. the farmer outside it's meant for the it's meant for the people who are you know maintaining our cities and running everything smoothly it's meant for the people who are uh, sitting in rural pockets and taking care and you know uh, really being in the front lines of healthcare it's for everybody so how do we really make this a democratized piece of technology how does everyone get access to it and benefit from it i think collaboration is the way to go and i think i, I completely agree with you sense. and yeah. i completely agree with you and one of the problem is we people are very visually uh or oriented people right and we like yeah. technologies as much as uh, anthropomorphize right uh, so we like so when it's when, sp- when you speak about ai we rather look at a sofia or look at a, a robot and see you that's the ai or uh, <laughs> see a visual representation like the skynet taking over uh, the whole world you know yeah. that's yeah. where the people's mind go but if you are t- talking you know t- telling about hey there is a sensor which you can attach to the cow and that will give connected to an ai uh, you know system a framework mm-hmm. where it updates the behavior of the cow and let you know if you need a human intervention <laughs> that's very boring to hear to right yeah. there is no futuristic vision of flying cars and uh, robots uh, that are walking across the street so yeah. uh, that's another challenge right how do we convince people hey these things are magic even though you don't see the magic these things are necessary things yeah. we need to implement because magic is in the end product you yeah. get better uh, quality of and quantity in terms of milk yeah absolutely yeah you're right i think it's just about threading all these pieces together and really just making the magic happen and uh, that's basically uh, all we have this week on uh, last week with india ai thank you so much all of you for tuning in and thanks jibu for your time as usual great insights and i i hope we'll be back again next always week always great see you soon next week yep absolutely take care and stay safe everyone